Now we're going to look at a practical effect of how to use the text modifiers to achieve this wave effect. Let's start from the beginning. The first thing that we need to do is select our text and add some text modifiers, which you can find in the inspector. To add a new modifier, we'll need to use the plus icon. Now you'll see that we have a new modifier group that appeared in the inspector. The next thing that we need to do is indicate which properties that we want to animate. We can do that by hitting this plus button here and we'll have this drop down list. And now we can select the position property. At this point, we now have the X and Y property that we can animate. So for example, if we wanted to change the Y property, we could drag this up and down, or for example, type in negative 50. And now we have our text that is sitting above our text box. Another thing that I want to be able to change is the scale. So we can go back to the plus button and add a scale modifier to this modifier group. Now I'm going to set the scale to 110 on the X and 120 on the Y. You can see by changing the scale, we've affected the text on the screen. Now we'll use this scale later on to add a little bit of squash and stretch. Now that we have our modifier properties set, let's go in and adjust the range and fall off so that we can create the wave. Let's go ahead and work with the fall off. This first numerical value is telling you that the fall off will start between 0%, which is the beginning, up to 100%, which is the end. We're going to make the fall off start at the center. So that means that we'll need to put a value of 50% here. We also want the fall off to end in the middle. Now it may not seem like it, but the fall off is actually in the center. The problem right now is that the exclamation marks are a lot smaller than the U's and the O's. Now, obviously this has our center point weighted a bit off to the right. Now, if all the characters were the same size, it would be right in the middle. Now that we have the fall off set, we can actually use the offset to move that line up and down our text run. And this is how we'll be generating that wave effect. If we pay attention to the fall off, you can see that the uh, gradient is pretty straight. Like you can see here, this is a straight line and we want more of a curve. If we want to make this smoother, we need to go into the range options fly out and change the interpolation. You can see that right now we have a linear interpolation, which is making that straight line. But when we switch it to cubic, you can see that we have a much more smooth path. If we're not happy with the curve, we can always adjust it here with the handles. This time I don't want to adjust it, so I'll just use the default curve. Now that we have all that set up, we're ready to go to animate mode and start animating. Before we start adding keys, let's give ourselves some more duration on the timeline. Let's say eight seconds. And because we're going to be making a looping animation, let's enable our work area and make it end at five seconds and start at three. So that gives us a total of two seconds to animate in. The reason that we put the work area in the center is sometimes we want to have keys that go before and after the work area to create a better loop. The first thing we'll be animating is the offset. And you'll notice that as I move that offset, we're creating that wave effect that we're looking for. Now, right now, the fall off starts in the middle. So if we go to negative 100, you'll see that the wave is actually outside of the text field and scooting that back has automatically generated us a key at the start of the timeline. We also need to create a key at the end of the timeline to move the offset all the way through. So we're gonna go to 100%. If we press play, we'll be able to preview the animation. As you can see, we have the start of our wave effect. Now all that's happening is that we're taking our entire range and moving it from one end of our text block to the other. To make this effect continuous, we'd need to run that range twice. But instead of running it through twice, what we can do is create an additional range and move it further back. So let's go ahead and create that range. With our text selected, we can go back into the modifier group as if we're gonna apply another property and instead select range. Now you'll see that we have a second range appearing below the first. 
Let's go back to design mode and adjust some of the properties on here. We need to make it the exact same as the first. So if you remember, we need to go to 50 and 50. Don't forget, we also need to go in and change the interpolation on the curve. Now we can go back to animate mode and continue our animation. Just like with the first range, we'll need to animate the offset of the second one. We'll repeat the same process that we did for the first one. So at the beginning, we'll set our offset to minus 100. And at the end, we'll set a key for positive 100. As we move through the animation, you'll notice that both ranges are passing through the text block at the same time. Now, if we offset the keys and place the last key in the center, you'll see that our wave effect is now continuous. You'll notice though that once we get past the halfway point, the effect ends up stopping. So what we need to do is copy and paste this first loop, and then you'll see that the effect is continuous. But there's one last problem we need to fix. You'll notice that the effect is actually hitching somewhere in the center. Let's zoom in and I'll show you the issue. The problem is that Rive tries to play as many frames as possible. To fix the issue, all we need to do is select this frame here and instead of linear interpolation, let's use hold. Now we won't have any interpolation between the keys, which will eliminate the glitch. As you can see, when we play the animation, everything looks fine. And there you have it, we have our wave effect.